Hey guys, this is Kelsey from the Arcane Library. Um, I wanted to record a video on the somewhat weird, not autofocusing camera I have um, because I had so many people ask me about what's actually in my minimalist DMs kit. Um, so I mentioned recently that I actually am a minimalist. Like I practice minimalism in my day-to-day -day life. Um, these are literally all the D&D books I own even though, or I guess gaming related books, even though I, I mean, I've been playing the game for almost 20 years, but um, I, I really, I've enjoyed having this as a life philosophy and it really extends into many of the things that I do, including my writing, as you guys may have noticed, and um, you know, everything from like my wardrobe to how I eat and especially how I game. So um, let me go into this a bit further. and. D&D, as we all know, it's a hobby, and most hobbies require you to get a certain amount of gear in order to play. Like, that's the whole allure of having a hobby is sort of accumulating the stuff over time that you need to, to be a more advanced practitioner of your hobby. Um, and so I'm always struggling with that balance because I, I try not to buy things that I'm not going to truly like cherish and use, um, but then again, the gaming industry really can only thrive because we buy things and because we buy stuff from third-party writers like me. Um, that's how we keep people going in this industry. So um, as a creator, I try to make sure that the stuff I make is so um, useful and, and helpful that it's worth it and that it's really something that you're not only going to use but maybe, you know, come back to and find extreme value in. So that's that's my philosophy as a creator. I only want to make things that I think are valuable enough to be worth buying and they're not just going to sit on your shelf and not, you know, see disuse or not contribute to the way that you approach your game. So I hope that's a decent philosophy. Okay, long intro. I don't edit my videos, which maybe that's laziness or maybe it's honesty right there because there's no cutting. So. Um, here's what we're gonna do. I want to take you through my actual DMs kit and it all fits in this tiny bag right here um, And I want to demonstrate that I don't feel I'm making any actual unfortunate compromises um, I'm always happy with what I have with me and in fact I'd probably use the same kit at home although I definitely take it to cons and I take it around the city and uh, It's really nice to not have to lug a huge amount of stuff um, There are only two things that get me mad in life and my girlfriend will crack up telling you this. She knows exactly what they are. It is trying to put a sheet on a bed. Trigger. I don't know what it is about that. I hate that. But the number one thing that makes me get crabby is when I have to carry tons of stuff over long distances. And I think that's because I, I just don't see the purpose in having so much stuff that carrying it becomes a nightmare. So that's it. So that's why my DMs kit is tiny and we're gonna go into it. So here we go. First thing, I will pull out whatever I can first. Okay, here we are. Dice. I love dice. Who doesn't like dice? Everybody has their own vibe, the, the colors and types and styles that they like. And I've definitely gone through ups and downs in my life about what I like there, but um, in this case, you can see I have these in a really sturdy, um, re-zippable bag because I want to be able to see what's in there. And I really actually love these. I bought a bunch of these Ziploc bags for like storing like household things like loose nails and things. And they actually are super useful because they're so durable and you can reseal them a bazillion times. And, um, you know, let's keep plastic out of the environment to the degree that we can, but these bags are really great. Um, and you can see that I have a couple sets. I have three sets of dice in here. I have uh, black, white, and red. I love how those colors look together, and I also find them extremely easy to read. And there's something a little threatening about having a red die or a black die. I like being able to roll in front of my players um, whenever possible, and you know, I like saying something like, okay, the red die represents this, or whatever. It's kind of a nice way to um, differentiate rolls you know, while keeping the dice collection to a reasonable amount. And let me add on to that, there are actually a couple other dice I bring with me and I took them out so I could fast show them to you. But the first one, I always bring this. I love these. These are the 
character generation dice. Um, first off, I'm not really, this is, nobody knows that I'm talking about their products in here, so I hope this isn't seen as any kind of weird uh, paid endorsement thing. These are just straight up great. These are by Jade Gaming, and what you have is um, an alignment generator on these two six-siders, and then you have a, this one is for a class, so this one then is for a race. And if you want to generate an NPC, you just roll these together quick and you will get a fascinating result every single time. And it's it's the kind of thing that, that help, helps you keep away from your cliches. You know, because if, if you walk into a tavern and you imagine the, the most stereotypical setup, you've got like a human barkeep who's like an old old-ish man who looks like maybe he was an adventurer once, and then you've got a few people around the room, a shady type who's drinking by himself, you know, an Aragorn in the corner. Um, and that doesn't really stretch you as a DM, and it really isn't as interesting as it could be, so I love having opportunities to generate NPCs on the fly and surprise myself as the DM, because you kind of know so much when you're the DM, and finding things out and being delighted by twists and surprises is one of the best parts of being a DM, so I use those to generate NPCs just constantly. Even in the morning when I'm leaving, I'm like, hmm, who would I be today? And I roll it and I'm like, oh yeah, I'm a neutral good warlock? Half orc? Okay. Um, it's just fun to think about, so I love them. Next, I have the six-sided die that I got on Amazon, I don't know where else you can get this, that is a weather generator. Because if the weather doesn't matter in your game, it should. It's fun. And to just arbitrarily decide how the weather is one day is not as fun as letting fate decide for you. And it also takes out some micro decision making that would otherwise be a cognitive burden on the DM. So I love rolling the weather die and interpreting it into the status of the game. So if it's, you know, if I roll the snow result and it's the summer, I'll just say it's a particularly cold day. Um, and then finally, my final auxiliary dice is this directional die, which actually got 3D printed. Um, I pulled up where I got it from. Oh no, I, I closed it. Well, it was from an online site. I'll try to link to it in this video that does 3D printing. And this is great because so many things happen where you have to find a random direction. And, you know, somebody gets thrown, an explosion happens, just so many reasons. And I like having the dice decide instead of me arbitrarily deciding where an explosion goes or where somebody flies because that way it isn't seen as punitive or you know me purposefully trying to get somebody um, you never want that feeling so the die roll really helps to make it fair and make nobody worry that I'm trying to like throw them off a bridge unfairly so um, I don't I mean that doesn't happen ever but it just for me it's kind of nice to not have to worry about that Okay, next thing. So this is another little bag, and within this bag are some oversized flat plastic minis um, and some mini stands. So let me see, I have, I carry a handful of oversized ones with me. You know, I wanna say this is maybe 10 to 12, and we have examples like uh, we have Earth Elementals, we have a Frost Giant, and I love, love flat plastic minis and I will tell you that I was a skeptic when I was deciding you know do I want to carry a tackle box of minis around that may or may not be right for this game am I going to be able to plan correctly which minis I want am I going to be able to find them in the entire cache of minis that I have or once had um and honestly no no god I hate carrying minis around and I don't actually I might get flack for this but I don't think the Watsy minis generally speaking, are that well painted or very representative in a nice way of the characters and creatures. So the solution to that, in my opinion, is flat plastic minis, and they're excellent. So I put a few together just to kind of show you guys, but like here's an example um, of a, a character. Now you get a beautiful front and back art that lines up, which is so cool. And these look phenomenal on the table. They look great on Dwarven Forge. I've used them in multiple ways. Because they have an acrylic clear base, 
Um, and you know, you can, you can take them out of it and reuse these bases. And so within this bag, I carry a variety of bases. I have some medium sized ones for larger creatures. You can actually create, make anybody into a flying creature, which is so cool. This is such a great system because otherwise we have to carry around like clear, you know, dice boxes or like plates and things for, for flying creatures. And there are some reasons to have those things, but generally I would just much rather have something I can use so quickly on any mini that I have, just pop them on that flying stand and boom, there you go. So um, I put together a couple other guys just to demonstrate. So like, here's a big red dragon. And not big, I mean, this is like a young red dragon perhaps on a larger base. So cool. Again, you can see all of the stuff beneath it if you want to put this on Dwarven Forge and through and beyond it. And I think that's the huge advantage of these. These guys blend in so beautifully to the terrain that you may or may not be using um, because they're clear and you just get that art. Like you just really focus on that gorgeous art. You can see it from so many angles. I sound like I'm getting paid by them. I'm really not. I just love these things so much. And here's a beholder um, flying around. Love it. He's on the flying base. Shoo. I mean, I do have minis. I mean, check this guy out. I love that guy. He's so cool. So I'm not saying get rid of your actual 3D minis, but maybe just keep the ones that you love the most and stop hauling so many boxes of minis to your game or give it, give yourself the chance to try it out. And let me just give you this. Okay, here's the lowdown. How many minis do you think you can carry in person to a game? I mean, a couple tackle boxes perhaps, and you've got all your hands full. So maybe like a hundred if you're lucky and you chose the right ones. But here is every flat plastic miniature that I own. And this is hundreds. This is actually, I mean, honestly, this is probably around 300. And here is monsters for me in the red folio. And these are literally just business card holders that I got on Amazon. I saw someone else do this and I thought it was ingenious where you literally just pop all your minis in here. You can leaf through it. I have them organized however, like the way I think makes sense, which is kind of by type. Um, you know, like aberrations and then we move to like water creatures and pirates and stuff like that. Um, and this is just so easy and I have a mini for just every situation. I have, you know, when you buy these, they're from Arknight. Um, you can get them on the web and they come with like a batch of cool and slightly different looking minis. So like, look at all these lizard guys. Look at all this lizard folk situation. I have so many, I have variety. Um, they just visually look different, which is something you don't get in 3D minis either. So you can tell them apart. Like Claire's will say, oh, I attacked the one who's holding a spear or I attacked the one with a crest instead of spikes, you know, love it. Um, and the red one is for the DM, it's for me. And then this black one is players can choose one from here and there's so many options so players can choose uh one to represent their character and then i go in here for um humanoid npcs as well and just kind of to show you quickly through here um you know here's you get a couple you could have duplicates which is actually super useful like for town guard you know i have five soldiers that look similar um and then I think I, again, I have these organized in a way that makes sense to me. I think it's by race. Um, and you can just like see them so easily. I don't know, I love this. Definitely a, a game changer. All my minis right here, boom. And then, okay, let's look what else is inside. We're getting near to the end of what's in my kit. So of course, notebook and pen. I, uh, I write everything down during my games on paper. Um, although people take notes on devices, it's totally cool too. I just like writing things down. I, I just, that's the way I get my ideas out. Everybody's different. Um, this is also like, you know, this is me actually developing content for the Arcane Library mixed in here. So I like having it kind of all in one place. These are moleskin notebooks. I buy the, um, the ones that are just blank paper without lines and soft cover. You know, the reason, a little aside here, the reason I buy soft cover notebooks is because I used to buy hardcover ones and then be afraid to write in them because I was like, well, this is a really nice hardcover. I don't want to write something in it unless it's a worthwhile idea. So I would actually, I was giving myself sort of paralysis from brainstorming because I didn't want to waste pages in my beautiful hardcover notebook, um, which is hilarious. You'd never think that would actually be a concern to somebody, but it actually was to me. So. The softcover ones for me, for some reason, are just 
easier to write in without me feeling like I'm, you know, annihilating a precious hardcover notebook for no reason. So, um, whatever it takes, whatever it takes to get yourself writing. And then I have this fountain pen. You don't need a fountain pen to write, but I got this as a gift and I really have loved it. It's all dinged up because I've used it so much and it's nice to just have your writing implement and it's beautiful. Um, if you can get a cool pen that encourages you to write, then do it. Um, it's also refillable and I feel good about that because then I don't have to be discarding thousands of plastic pens all the time. Okay, ah, this is a big one for me. Little iPad. This is an ancient iPad too, it is still kicking. It's doing great. Um, I used to work for Apple and so I will do anything within my power to try to make an Apple device work. Um, even when it's probably past its prime and this is probably the oldest Apple device I own, but yet it still works really well. And the reason I have this is simply to <clears throat> access all of my digital books. And yes, I have a lot of digital books. Oh, word. Guys, I just got a text message from Steven from Castle Mac. Um, hey Steven. Sorry, I'm gonna mute this. All right. Um, but this iPad, I really just use it for PDFs of books because I do not like lugging full-size books around. And I will absolutely buy a hardcover of a book that I treasure. You see that I have some. Um, but if I want to bring all my books with me or have tons of options available, I buy the drive through PDF of it as well and I slap it up into Dropbox and then I can access all my books. They're bookmarked. It's so great. It's so fast. Um, and I've even considered, you know, there are some services where you can buy a third party book or not a third party book, just a hardcover or anything. You send it to a third party and they will make a digital copy of your book legally for you and then um, destroy or recycle the paper pulp from the copy you sent them. And I have strongly considered doing that to some of the books that I have or had um, so that I can keep the book, but the book isn't taking up a ton of space or demanding that I carry it around places. Um, because part of my own personal philosophy is I don't try to own things to impress other people, which is surprising how often we do. And it's a constant battle, but I don't want to impress other people with my stuff. I want to impress them with the quality of my game when I'm playing D&D. So that is my true north. And um, if I can reduce the size of my book collection and digitize it legally, I'm totally down. So um, that's that. And all right, we're, we're getting near the end here. I have been playing without a DM screen for a while because I always find myself standing up over it, trying to talk to people and not being able to see the table too clearly over it. Um, I don't know, so I don't really play with one anymore. I enjoy rolling in front of the players at every possible opportunity because it's actually scarier because they know you're not fudging and they know you're being fair. Um, but I do have a mini DM screen for hiding the miniatures that I've pre-put together. So this, and I put stickers on it, I'm still, I'm still creating some space here. It's hard to find the right size ones, but I, in theory, I want to put stickers like all over this thing. Um, and I got this actually from the Arcane Goods, like they have a folder, like a beautiful leather folder that's for campaign planning. Um, and I picked one up and it has so much merit and it it's extremely cool. I just found that the thing that I use the most from it is the mini DM screen that it comes with. So it has a ton of excellent 5e tables on the inside here if you need to reference them. Um, it sits at a little bit of an angle on the table like that. Um, it doesn't sit like perfectly, you know, up and down. It's a little bit leaned forward, which is fine. It gives it stability. But I really just hide put together minis behind here and then I will so occasionally like peek at the conditions just to make sure I have that right. There's also some magic item prices, rules for jumping, grappleizing, cover. All the stuff that we forget even though we've done it a thousand times so i like having that off to the side sometimes just to like keep a few surprises um and then the final thing i'm sure that everybody is so curious about my mapping solution right you guys are dying to know um i actually after a ton of thinking about this and testing and trying different things i use the foldable map with grid on two sides and some multicolored wet erase pens. 
which in a world that has Dwarven Forge and custom terrain that you can make for yourself in this like glorious crafting culture, like why would I do that? Um, the answer is like multi-pronged here, but first of all, yes, I don't like carrying around pounds and pounds of Dwarven Forge. I don't like storing tons of Dwarven Forge, so that which I have is very um, pared down to be what I would use maybe at my house and very recyclable. I could rebuild rooms with it. I don't pre-build giant dungeons. I just kind of slap together one room at a time as needed. Um, if I use, if I'm using 3D terrain, but for the most part I don't because I've been playing D&D for a long time since I was a child. And I was, th I had this like epiphany where I thought back on some of my favorite games, the, the, my favorite memories from when I was a kid. And I realized, we didn't have 3D terrain, we didn't have any of that. It was all on, you know, wet erase boards with either pewter minis or like dice standing in to represent us. And I mean, do I advocate using dice to stand in for you? No, like use a cool flat plastic mini or something, use something more visual. But as far as the spaces go and the tactical nature of the game, I remember, I remember dungeons with like damp walls and guttering torches and trap doors and things skittering down the ceiling and none of that was ever because of the terrain it was depicted in you know 2d on a nicely drawn map and all of it was really in my head so 3d minis not so much for me um visual minis yeah like i think there's value to that but v super visual terrain for me isn't worth the incredible difficulty of transporting it around when I know that that is something that you can put in your player's mind by using description. So is it a bit of a compromise? Sure. Am I never going to use 3D terrain? Of course not. I'm totally going to use it sometimes, but by and large, 90% of my games is all drawn on that erasable map. I use different colors, you know, red for fire. I've got green for trees, blue for water, whatever. It's, it helps, but, um, Really, if you're considering doing this and kind of going back to the old school ways or whatever, you know, not that that means it has more merit, but um, think about what you really remember from the games that you've played. And I don't think you're going to remember a photorealistic, you know, memory of how the terrain looked. I think you're going to remember how it looked to you in your mind. So there we are. And that my friends, is almost all of my DMs kit. I also have um, a tiny thing. I I make these cards. I'm probably gonna figure out a way to, to maybe sell these blank ones. These are um, sort of prototypes. These are ways that I can track player stats and then track monster stats. So, um, you know, you'll see these aren't pre-filled, but these are for monsters. The tan ones are for players. I really like tracking initiative using these and also sort of having my player's stats at a glance from me um, because I play D&D with a lot of new people that sort of need some help and I play D&D at cons where there are folks whose names I just learned so I can have it written here. Um, and then even during my longer games, it's nice just to know at a glance sort of what your characters on your in your game can do, what they look like, and sort of have your monsters just ready to grab instead of flipping through books all the time. I just slap down what I want to know about them on here, whether I fill the whole thing out or I'm just filling out their passive perception, HP, and AC, and like, you know, plus four bite, 1d6, plus two damage or something. Um, so that's that. I have these I have these at my disposal if I want to use them. I don't use them every single time, but most of the time I do. So that's it. That is my entire DMs kit. That's what I use mostly at home. I use when I'm traveling. I love it. I will probably tweak it as time goes on, and if you guys have any suggestions for what I could add to it, or any questions about it, um, I hope that you will leave me a comment or email me, kelsey at thearcanelibrary.com, and we can chat about it. I love talking about this kind of thing, so. Alright, thanks for listening. This video went a little long, but it's okay. I hope it's still enjoyable, and I will catch you guys later. Alright, bye bye